Hi guys, I'm excited, I'm back. Um, I hope you're excited. <laughs> um, I had a great trip and now I'm ready to um, sew again with you all. So I'm just gonna quickly do my shares and then we'll get going. Um, so make sure you check in when you get here. Good morning, Jennifer. Did your last name change? I feel like your last name changed. Um, good morning, Deb. I'm just quickly, thanks, Tina. Good morning, Deborah. I'm back for this week. Well, I'm back today, and then I'm back next week. And then the week after that, I'm out of town again. Um, I don't have anybody filling in for me. It didn't. I don't know what I'm thinking. It's been too long, apparently. I don't have anybody filling in for me that week that I'm off this time. Um, so sorry. Um, hi, Kim. Good morning, Rita. Um, so I just will be gone for that week. But I'm taking my kids. We're going to Disney World. So wish me luck send booze, I don't know, for a week, <laughs> a week at Disney, that's, um, I must be some kind of fool, I don't know, so, hi Susan, hi Della, um, I'm almost done sharing, and then we'll get started, <laughs> yeah, it will be fun, they're old enough now that they, I think they will really enjoy it, and, um, my whole family's going, which is fun, so my in-laws, and my mom, um, and my brother and everybody will be there. So it's kind of a big family reunion. We don't really have a family reunion, but this will be like that. So it's kind of fun. Um, <laughs> I know I should do a few lives from there. Um, I don't know what we would talk about, but, um, oh, what are you doing? Oh, I got a little bit crazy. Oh, you stayed at the fort? Um, my computer's being really crazy. We actually aren't staying on on the property this time we're staying um, at an Airbnb so we're gonna try that out and see how it goes <laughs> um, okay I'm done sharing and then really quickly I'm gonna throw in the comments I'm just going to throw the um, the link to my Amazon store because um, I didn't I don't actually have a post for today's project um, but, um, I did put the supplies, the one supply that we're using, I put it at the very top of my shop here. So, um, it won't let me pin, oh, here we go. Pin that. I'm going to pin my comment real quick. Okay. So right there you can see, um, at the top, the supplies, the one supply that is abnormal that we're using today. And that's, um, this elastic. We're using quarter inch elastic. Um, and this one's black just because I'm using gray fabric. Um, you can get it in white. You're not... Um, you're not really going to see it, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm using quarter inch elastic. And then also in the description of this um, video, you can find the link. I would, if you want, the easy thing to do would be to go to that oven mitt and print that off and use that as a template for your mitten because we're just making mittens and it starts out, looks just like the, um, excuse me, it looks just like the oven mitt that we did. But um, I will say if you're going to use that, um, oven mitt, I would just make it a little bit wider around the bottom edges here. So mine that I'm doing right now, this is five and a half inches wide. So, um, it's a little bit wider than the oven mitt, but you want to have enough and we're going to do elastic. So it's going to get even smaller. So make it, give yourself lots and lots of room here up at the top, at the bottom of the mitten. So, um, Hi, Melissa. Oh, yeah. Super Bowl. Um, I'm not. <laughs> I don't like either of the teams. Um, so um, that's that. So I, you can print it out or if you want to make this for your littles. I, what I did, what I actually did, I didn't print it, but 
I just traced it. So you can print it or you can just trace your hand. So, and for your lip, if you're making them for your littles, um, you can see I've done like an inch and a half, or maybe you can see, I've got like an inch and a half on either side of my wrist just to have enough space. Hi Vicki, um, an inch and a half on either side of my wrist. And then it's about an inch wider than the rest of my hand everywhere else. So if you're going to trace your littles, your littles hand, just give yourself lots of room here at the wrist. And then I've gone down. I mean, what's this? This is about um, like four inches from my wrist down to give up because we're going to fold some under and you want the mittens to be a little bit, I mean, I didn't want them to end up here. So you want them to end somewhere around in here. So that's how I've kind of drafted this pattern. But like I said, you can also use the mitten, the oven mitt pattern and just make it a little smaller for your little guy or girl or whoever you're making them for. Um, so that's kind of how I've come up with the pattern. And it looks like this. I need four. So I've got four pieces. And this is like a fleece. So it's real soft, warmer. Um, these are obviously not like waterproof mittens. Um, hi, Erica. Um, I can't see your whole comment for some reason. Let me see. Oops. Oh. <laughs> that was weird. When I clicked on your name, it said, bring Erica on camera. You don't want to be on camera, do you? <laughs> Um, I can't see the whole comment. I'll respond after the video. I'm, this is kind of my beginner classes from what I could see. Like, this is what we do. We kind of just walk through projects here. Hi, Tanya. Walk through projects here together. And then, um, that's, and you can ask any questions. And I always take requests for what you want to make. So, um, I always take that into account. So I've got four pieces. Sorry, guys, if I'm totally off track. I've gotten out of, I'm not used to doing these anymore because I was away for so long. Four pieces of fleece that are like this, they can all be facing the same way because it doesn't matter. The fleece, unless it's the wrong side. So this one is, since it's the same on each side, if there's a pattern, you'll want two of one, the pattern on the inside, and two, so you would have two and two, if that makes sense. If, so, does that make sense? You want two where the pattern goes this way and two where the pattern goes this way. So you would cut them like this if you had a wrong side. You would cut the mittens like this with the pattern on the inside and one with the thumb one way and one with the thumb the other way. Okay, thanks Greta. So that's what we've got. That's what we're working on. We're making some mittens and just for fun because I want to um, and these are going to be my mittens. I'm going to add a fun little detail and it's almost Valentine's. So I've cut out a felt heart and I'm just going to throw that. I mean, I think I'm going to put it in the palm of my mitten. I think that'll be fun. So I'm going to throw those on. Um, and they're just little felt hearts that I've cut out. And I'm just going to sew that onto the fleece. Hi, Tina. Um, so guys, you know, share this video to your wall so you can find it later. Come back and see it. Um, or you can subscribe to me on YouTube and I'll put this video up there so you can find it later on. Um, tag your friends if they have been wanting to make mittens or learning how to sew. Because these are just um, straight lines and we're gonna add the elastic which we've never done. I'm gonna show you how we do that and that'll make them kind of tight at the wrist. Good morning Gina. Um, so you'll want, oh and then for the elastic, one more thing. So for my elastic, um, my like I said this is five and a half inches so the total is gonna be about 10 inches right together. So I did 70% of that. Oh yeah Joe Sorry, I missed your name, but I'm in Illinois, too, and I'm freezing right now, which is probably why I have mittens on my mind. <laughs> it's so cold. Um, 10 inches, so you want 70%. So this is 7 inches of elastic, okay? So 70% of your two bottom edges put together is what you're going to cut your elastic to, okay? Like I made my son some, and it was, hold on, let me remember, that it was 8 inches, and I cut my elastic to five and a half inches, which is just about 70%. So 70% is what I've cut my elastic to. We're going to stretch it, and then it'll come back and close it up. That's what, for the elastic, you need two strips that are 70% of your bottom two edges put together. So 10 inches, 70% is seven inches. Okay, so two strips of that, of this, and this is quarter inch. Um, you could use a little bit thicker, but the quarter inch is nice and easy to put on like a thicker elastic would be harder to work with and it would like be tighter on your wrist like this is pretty flexible so that's why I picked the quarter inch so 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these little hearts on. I'm going to sew these hearts, and I'm going to put them on the palms so that when I, like, put my palm up, it's, um, oh, gosh, Tina, that's way colder than it is here. But, guys, in Florida, it's, like, going to be 70, between 70 and 80, just saying. Um, I'm not really a Florida, super Florida person, but right now I'm ready <laughs> for the Florida weather because, brr, I'm cold. Okay, so we've got our sewing machine, and I've got it, I've got black thread in today, <clears throat> Um, because when I put the elastic on, I want it to be a black, um, at the edge. So I'm just going to sew this on around as close as I can to the, um, edge of my heart. And I like to get it, I actually just put the bobbin in. So, hi Megan. Hopefully it's going to work all right. Okay. And then I'm just going to go slowly around. around the edge and also guys I know Facebook has recently just changed its algorithms again so I really recommend if you're here and you want to see um, if you want to make sure you see my videos in this video somewhere you'll see where it says turn on notifications so turn those on so that you can find me um, because it's not guaranteed you're gonna see it oh yeah Tina right I'm not like I said I'm not a huge like Florida person but right now for a week of 70 I'll, I'll do it I'll do the bugs for a week to get that warm weather because my toes are cold all the time notice I didn't even pin this the felt really just sticks pretty nicely to the fleece um, without any sort of but you could totally pin it um. I totally forgot to close the door um, so my dog might take off barking Usually I close my craft room door and lock them inside, but I forgot today, so sorry for that. I have like a routine that I usually do and I'm all off of it since I took the time off. But I got to go to Mood um, in, when I was in New York, which was fun, but also holy moly overwhelming, like they have so much. I don't even know. I didn't even know what to think. It was crazy. So, it was kind of intense. It was an intense experience. Um, and then we also just ate our way through the entire city. So, that was super fun. Lots and lots of eating. Saw a few shows. So, that was neat. It was a good experience. So, here's my heart. I just got it right there. You could put it up at the top. You know, you could put it down at the wristband. I just thought it would be fun to be right in my palm. I'm going to do the other one real quick. And the other reason I decided to make mittens was because for some reason my children cannot keep track of their mittens their, or gloves. Like every day they come home from school, I don't have my gloves. I'm like, how hard is it? Really? Apparently it's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> to keep track of your mittens. So you could add a strap. That would be helpful if you have forgetful children like I do. And my oldest even has like an adult there all the time helping him and apparently she can't keep track of mittens either. So I don't know. Who knew? Who knew it was such a difficult thing? mom pet peeves so oh so cold well you need mittens everybody needs some mittens just to, to sleep with I guess because it's so flipping cold it's so cold Mm -hmm. 
could um, do some initials in here. Use your free motion quilting technique and just draw the initials. Um, that would be super cute. <clears throat> Where is it? Okay. So we've got our hearts. Yeah, I know. That silly Groundhog Day kind of broke my heart this morning with his ridiculous six more weeks. So I've got my hearts on. Now I'm just going to take the other side of the mittens. So if you were doing a patterned fleece, this would be the pattern would be facing up, facing at you. And this would be again. I can't see. It's not showing me the whole comment, guys. So, I mean, you could place the heart wherever you wanted. I thought it would be fun to put it in my, in the palm. So you can put it wherever you want. Totally optional. That's the great thing. So this would be, if you have patterns, you put the pattern right side down on the right side of the top. So you have your right sides facing now. And again, your right sides facing on this one. And then you could use pins or clips, whatever you've got. And if, um, I did a test one of these and it was fine, but if you seem, if your machine seems to be um, feeding at different rates, this would be a good project to use your um, walking foot on okay just remember with your walking foot you can't you don't do a back stitch so you can clip them or not I'm not gonna lie I didn't clip them when I did my tester earlier. <laughs> you could also pin them. I mean, this fleece is pretty um, easy going, so it's not like if you make a hole it'll show up and be horrible. It would be fine. Use a pin too. Um, hold on, my brain is And then um, you can do this before you pin. And I wanted to, I forgot. What we're going to do is I'm just going to fold this, the bottom edge under, trying to make it a, about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to steal some pins from up here. And um, I slowly lost all my clips somehow. Um, so I'm just going to fold this under by about a quarter of an inch, and I'm gonna do the same. Just make sure that they line up, so you want them to be folded under so the bottom edges line up. And then I'm actually gonna sew that in place really quickly. So take unpin it as much as you need to sew it each side separately. And then I'm just gonna sew one seam right there. Good morning, Linda. And you could just use a straight stitch. Um, or a zigzag stitch, whichever you like. Let's see, go down. Okay. <clears throat> and just try and keep this bottom seam. That's what you're measuring off of, because that's going to be you're going to see it on the outside and so you want to make sure it's straight to this line not necessarily to the part under if that makes sense that might have not have, that sentence might not have made much sense but I'll show you what I mean the same with this one too. Probably go a little faster. So you're folding this away from the right side. So this would be the what would be the inside of your um, mitten. Okay. 
and if you can, anytime you can, I prefer to do this type of chain stitching where I'm not actually um, cutting the thread and starting fresh. I'm just <clears throat> putting the next piece on. That's always the easiest um, way to go, I think. And it saves your thread and saves time, less chance of thread pulling up into the machine and the bottom getting messed up. So that's my favorite little tip is to do as much chain stitching as you can. Alright, I'm going to unpin this because I can't see your whole comment, you guys. Um, oh, I haven't, e I haven't even looked. Linda, I'm sorry. Um, I am using the stop start button today just because I don't happen to have the other the foot even plugged in so I'm using it just I'm trying to practice on it so I'm better at it I my first instinct is always to put the pedal on and do it but I'm trying to go outside of my comfort zone and practice and I want to get a good feel for it before I start my son on the um, start stop button just so that I have some good tips for him. Um, so. so yes, I'm using the start stop. ready. We'll put these, take these apart. And I was thinking this would be a cute place too. You could put some sort of like something at the bottom like pom-pom or a fringe trim or something. That would be fun. Um, and now would be the time to do that. So then I'm going to clip these back together and we want to leave this bottom part open obviously and then we're just going to go all the way around everywhere but the bottom. <clears throat> and I'm going to start all the way at the very, all the way down here. Um, <clears throat> so just start all the way down at the bottom. It's going to be, my machine's not going to be super happy because there's a lot of <laughs> layers there, but it'll do it. It'll do it like I said, it'll do what I tell it to do. And then I'm using about a quarter of an inch seam. Um. to that thumb there um you're gonna pick it up and turn it I got a new machine um a couple weeks ago this is the um brother CS 6000i and it's fun it's yeah much newer than my last machine it's got more kind of more bells and whistles which can be good and bad, but I've liked it so far. Um, I've liked it a lot. So I 
I said, if it's not feeding at the same, um, if it's not feeding at the same rate, this would be a good one to use your um, walking foot. But mine's feeding just fine. I'll just give myself a little back stitch there at the end. It did come with an extended table, but I don't really care for those so much. Okay, and now is a good time to make sure, see it's going to fit, it fits my wrist, so that's good. You'll be able to get your wrist in. That's what you want to make sure. <clears throat> and then let me pin these back together. Or clip. You guys, I always say the wrong word. Okay, and then I'm going to go around this one as well. <clears throat> a back stitch at the beginning too so right where those seams meet is a good place for a back stitch on this like I'm right in the middle speed um, you don't have to go fast I know like we see people and they're going so fast like that's not really necessary um, I find I make way fewer mistakes if I just don't get impatient and just take a little bit extra time a little slower speed and don't try and force it Sounds like a really, really sweet quilt, Tanya. I love that idea. Um, okay, so we've gone all the way around both of our mittens, and now um, you can turn. You can do this really either way. You can turn it out or um, not. But now we're going to grab our elastic pieces that we have, and I'm going to put the elastic just. Um, I'm going to put it just under where um, the, I'm sorry, I lost the word. I'm gonna put it right along under here, right under the cuff or the part that we turned under. So you don't have to put it under the fabric, but just lying right below there. And then I'm gonna start, you can start, so this is the palm. I'm gonna start right here in the middle of the palm. And when, well, let's see, hold on, yeah. I'm gonna have a zigzag stitch, and I want it to be not all the way wider than my elastic because then it, the elastic will just move freely. I want it to catch just a little bit of the edges of the elastic, and I'm gonna start without, I'm not gonna try and pull or stretch the elastic at the start. I'm gonna just give myself a good, some back and forth stitches um, to really anchor this very beginning part down, and then it'll be easier to work with. Um, so I'm going to do a zigzag stitch, and that's why I've used a black thread, so it won't show too much, but you will have the zigzag here. Um, you could put it up a little farther, but the farther up you go, the harder it will be 
to actually do because we have to kind of push this bottom section out of the way. So the lower down it is, the easier it is going to be to add the elastic. So I'm just going to do it right under that turn that we did. So right there. And I'm going to start just with a zigzag back and forth to anchor it down. <clears throat> so let me go back to my zigzag stitch. And so for me, that's like a five. My um, width is a five for my zigzag. Um, if you have that measuring option. And then I'm just going to, um, let's see, just going to do a few to get a feel for where that's going to fall. Okay, here we go. And I'm just hand feeding it, and it's not really moving much yet. Um, okay, and then I'm going to do a little bit of a back. I'm going to go forward a bit and then back a bit, and then we'll be ready to start actually stretching the elastic. So I just really want this beginning section to be really well anchored. Okay. And now, and make sure, like I said, that the bottom of the mitten is pulled out of the way, and you're just working on the top. And then with the needle down to start, make sure the needle's down in the elastic, you're just going to pull. I don't know if you can see. Maybe it's better if I do this. I'm going to pull this as I go. So I'm stretching it as I sew, but keep the elastic lined up with that bottom line there. And it doesn't have to be a really tight stretch because, I mean, it's not like 50% of the... It's not like 50% of our mitten, it's 70%. So it's most of the way, um, but not all of the way. And if you have some extra at the end, we can snip it off. So just lightly pull your elastic as your machine goes, okay? And you want that anchor so when you pull, you're not pulling the elastic right out. That's why we start it at the beginning. <clears throat> and I'm just kind of pulling the mitten around as I go. So eventually I'll get to that part that I, where I started. But I'm gonna just stretch the elastic and go and just repeat that. Stuck on, there we go. Thanks guys. So then we'll eventually get around and just keep repeating this. Just always making sure that you're, you're not sewing both sides of your mitten together. And I like to stop frequently. It's easier that way. And that gives me a better idea of how much I need to stretch. Because I'm almost to the end, so I'm not going to have to stretch too much on my last little section. <clears throat> and then for the last bit, I'm just going to pull so that it lines up with the first section, and then sew. Just arrange one more time. Still lined up. And then I'm going to back stitch. So I'm, I'm getting the beginning and the end here. I'm going to do a couple back and forth to really anchor that elastic in. Okay. Okay, so then you can turn it out. Well, first, before we turn it out, I, got, I get excited to turn it out. The, this thumb needs to be addressed because that will pucker. You want to cut all the, almost as close to the stitch as you can into that V. That one doesn't want to do that. This machine is actually really reasonably priced. Um, okay, there we go. It's a really good price. Um, so you see, I've cut that V almost all the way to the stitch. Um, 
And then if you are having issues if you, with this um, not turning out well, you can notch that as well. Um, I, I mean, technically, I'm not, I don't know, Melissa, maybe, maybe you could do that. Um, I'm not sure if it would stretch the way or close the way we wanted it that way. We could try, you could try it. And then I'm just going to trim up my thread here. Got a few hangers on. Okay, and that's one. That's one mitten. See, and I could probably have, I mean, it's not super tight, but that's gonna keep it, keep it on. Okay, so there's one. Ding, 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 ding. Hi. And you could shorten this up too if you wanted it to be shorter, if you didn't like a longer mitten, but I like it to go under my coat, so I like it to be a little longer. And then, like I said, if this is um, not turning out correctly, you can um, notch that. But I think mine is fine. Okay, so that's one. I like this on the palm. I think it's fun. So then you wave to somebody. Yeah, I got a heart on there. Okay, so, and you see it's just like, it's a, just a little bit less, so it kind of pulls it in right there. Can you see how it pulls it in? You could do less. You could do like 50% for a really tight pull, but I don't really want it to be, I'm not like doing anything crazy. Um, with my with my mittens on you know so driving around town is all I need them for so I don't need them to like be extra tight and then we'll do this last one just so we can see the pair of them um, together and I'll show you one more time so if you do try doing one side and then the other let me know if that works um, I'm just not I'm trying to think of how that would I mean, I guess it might work. I don't know. I guess you just have more risk of, like, the elastic coming loose. I don't know. Try it and tell me what you what happens. <laughs> so again, I'm going to start this in the palm. Just so that the beginning of the... Because there is a little bit, since you... Um, since we backstitch, it's a little bit thicker see where I've backstitched there's a little spot so I put it on my so it's under my wrist so it's not as visible like I don't want it to be up on the top here that's more visible when I'm actually wearing them so I've put it that's why I've started the elastic right here you could start it on the side too but then it's harder because you've got the seam so backstitching over the seam is not as easy um, it's kind of a wonkier spot so I like it right here on the palm side palm side <clears throat> so again, just to recap, we're going to just, I'm going to hand feed it to start with, just to make sure I have everything lined up where I want it. And then I'll do some back stitching and forward stitching. I'll show it to you from this way this time to see if that gives you a different view um, and always I'm just always pulling this out from under so I'm not sewing through both sides um, let me just back stitch a little bit and then forward and then back it's maybe overkill but um I am not in the Boise area I am um if you're asking me I'm in Illinois um, um, and the more you stretch, the more iron mom, what? The more you stretch, the more, um, it will pull in. So if you want it to be really tight and you're doing a 50%, like, and this is only 50%, you'll have to stretch even more, um, The more you stretch, the more it will come in when you are done. Is this going? I feel like, what is this? Oh, there we go. 
kids being all wonky. Iron Man. <laughs> oh, I get it. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little slow. That's funny. <laughs> That's me. I am a superhero, so. And the other reason I like to stop and start so much is I want it to kind of be stretched evenly. So if I stretch it all really tight and then not as, like, at the beginning and then not as much as the end, it'll be, like, not as even. So I like it to be kind of an even stretch. An even stretch. Okay. Last stretch. I'm on the last stretch. Get it? You like that one, Jennifer? <laughs> Home stretch. Is that better? Again, with this one, don't forget to snip your um, your thumb seam, that V, like all the way up as close as you can get to your stitch. And then if you are having puckering issues, first just um, trim up closer to your seam here. So like the thumb is another one. You can trim closer, you can use pinking shears, or you can just do a V like Snip out a V and that will help it turn out a little better. But try not to get on that stitch. So I need your guys' help. I have to make um, some sort of Valentine's decor and I don't have any idea what to make. What should I make? Tell me. <laughs> Tell me what to make, because I don't know. I, my brain is not, my creativity is not working. So, um, let's turn this out. The pattern, there's two options. You could, in the description, I've listed an oven mitt pattern that is just basically like this. Um, you can print that out and um, use that. And make sure, just line it up with your hand and make sure that you have about an inch and a half on either side. Or just trace your hand with about an inch and a half on either side and then about an inch around your whole hand. That's what I've done. You can trace it like that as well. Okay. Heart pillows. I've been thinking about a wreath. I kind of want to do a wreath, but I'm not sure. I, could, I was thinking about like a stuffed wreath. Would that be fun? I don't, I'm always like... I don't want to do this, but would anybody else actually care or want to make that? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Like if we made our own wreath form, like out of like a pillow almost. Can you picture that? Does that make sense? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so there. Now we've got two mittens. Aren't they cute? So, and like I said, if you want, you can shorten this up or they'll just be cute little. I'm going to wear them now because I'm freezing. Oh yeah, I could do a baby book. So, here's my mittens. And you can see the, um, it kind of just scrunches in just a little bit to hold onto my wrist so they don't just slide right off. Um, so, I kind of like that and it was they're quick and easy to make you could also I was thinking you could just cut this off and pr and iron the underside in and they'd be fingerless so you could just will you guys cringe if I do it <laughs> if you just cut like this 
and then press the edges under, then you'd have fingerless, the fingerless um, mittens, which are fun too and cute. These would just be cute, kind of like hand warmers, I guess, not mittens. So you could snip that off. It'd be fun. That would be a fun idea. So that's all I've got for today. Um, so that was our fun, quick and easy project. And um, I think I'm going to do a wreath. I think I'm going to make one. I think that's what I'll do. I'll just do like a stuffed wreath, almost like a pillow that you turn into a circle. Um, oh, that would be, oh, that would be cute. Like the holder that goes on the back, like so kids could have them at school too. That would be super cute. I like that idea. Um, so here's our gloves. You could put whatever you wanted on here. Something else. Um, you could put, um, something on the front, like your initials, or, you know, put your kids' initials on them so maybe they don't get lost every single flipping day. Who knows? <laughs> I think the hearts turned out fun, too. So then when I wave to you, it's hearts. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Well, you can use... Um, I will pin it again in the comments. The You can find the elastic in my Amazon store. Um, I'll pin that again. And also the um, this brother machine is in there too. I've put all my favorite supplies in there. So if you guys ever need anything, um, if you ever need anything, you can always find everything I use on my Amazon store. Um, all my supplies. I try and put, whenever I use something, I'm like, oh, I got to put that in the store. So I try and put everything in the store, um, except for the serger. It wouldn't let me put the serger that Gina was showing you guys in the store, which was a bummer. I don't know why it didn't want that in there but um so you can find that on the I'll put I'll pin it again to the top of this it was pinned and then I unpinned it so I could see you guys <laughs> commenting it wasn't showing me and so then I'll repin it um make sure you guys turn on notifications so that you can find me um Facebook is playing again they just like to I feel like they just like to go in there and press buttons and let's see what happens when we do this so then it becomes harder um for me to get to you guys and I know you guys want to watch so um turn on notifications um and you can subscribe to me on YouTube so if you do miss one this will pop up in there um I can I'll shoot the link for that in there too so have a great um weekend I'll see you guys on Monday thanks for all the fun ideas um maybe we'll do whatever I decide on Monday um I'm gonna do one today too but then we'll maybe we'll recreate it on Monday so have a good day bye